A little different one today. Wanted to review a half day game changer, what the players are going to experience. So we had Frank come in. Um, he had a couple things in his swings that, that he wanted to work on. Uh, specifically from a goal standpoint, he wanted to be more consistent. Had ample speed and um, that was obviously an asset for him, but he had sometimes a bit of consistency issue. When I asked him his tendency, he didn't really have a, it was sometimes a little bit left, sometimes a little right. So he didn't really have a consistent shot shape, which was making it a little bit harder for him to manage on some of those tighter courses. So this was um, what we did and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, this is Frank's 3D. This is what we started with, with the half day game changer once I got his goals and what he was looking to do. So um, if we look at, this is the first swing. So if I play it, you know, you can sort of see um, just overall motion here. And then if I look at the data more specifically, a couple things stood out to me and always starting with the dress first. So to try to uh, make it as easy as possible. Obviously, if the dress is off, then you're going to see compensation somewhere else. So the first thing that stood out to me when I'm looking at setup was pelvis bend. So he ended up, um, and you can see by the image there, that his hips are bent over uh, quite a bit, sort of like I said, he was like almost trying to do a deadlift in the setup. So he was trying to be uh, too athletic to me in that setup position. We want to we wanted to make it a bit more natural for him in the address position. One of his main concerns was his shoulders getting flat at the top of the swing. Okay, so that was what he saw. Um, so then using the 3D, we can almost go back and figure out okay what's causing that. So uh, first thing we noticed was the pelvis was tipped over too much at address. And then as he would go back, there was sort of a couple things happening at the same time. One, if you look at the pelvis thrust number, you can see it's nine towards the ball. So his hips were driving into the ball as he took it away. So when that happened, um, his upper body would react and he would start to fall away with his chest and also stand up. So the combination of falling away and standing up would level his shoulders off. Um, too much and then that would he would react to that by adding more wrist and arm motion to give him more time to get things set up and that was leading to one of uh, the factors which was the consistency uh, good player obviously just trying to make it a little bit more refined and a little bit easier for him so there's a little inside scoop um, I'll just go quickly to one of the ones after when we were doing some feedback so if I go here if you look at that thrust number we cut it all the way down to four which was a big improvement a lot less towards the ball and we even pushed it after we took him off 3d to get it yep okay so we started low so that meant the hips were pointed down a lot okay and then the shoulders were way outside your toe line so what we did first was tuck your shoulders in um pressure moved back in your foot your hips were way more under your chest your chest is still relaxed but just not that was too athletic from the two athletic move, as you'd go back, the hips would tuck under, the head would fall away from the ball. So that was, you know, you would see flat shoulders, right? And then from that movement, now the hips are under, you're gonna have to do something to get back to the ball. So now what we're doing, hips under, at a dress, shoulder is over the toe line, you see that look? Now when you go back, I had a stick on the front of your head and almost like feeling like you were pushing backwards that let you stay more in your body angles when you went back and then when you swung down you didn't have to adjust and the speed was the same okay so once we got frank's uh, setup in backswing locked in so his head position stayed in the right spot this was just a little more incentive to keep the chest and arm position in, in a good spot. So we did 
club across the elbows. Uh, his tendency was to let the right arm get under the left. So in this drill, the right arm has to stay higher, which also makes his right shoulder higher, which made it a lot easier for him to sink up the backswing and not go as long. Once we did the backswing uh, refinement there with that drill, we started to move into uh, pausing at the top just to give him some clarity on the end of the swing and arm position. So here's a visual of um, once we did the drill, you notice you can see a little bit of that right elbow. He's obviously a lot more width at the top. The club's a lot. Um, it's still loaded up, but it hasn't traveled as much. So here is it in motion so you can sort of see the, in real time. Deliberate. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Following that, we move to um, full swings, just smooth ones where he was doing the same feels but without the pause, and then that's what it was starting to look like. Uh, here's it in full speed. So it really improved, made it a lot simpler. Here's down the line of the same. And then we have a side-by-side, -side. so you'll see the refinement. Again, we just gave him a chance to do it because of the chest and the load up and the arm position. He didn't need the extra anymore, and then that was going to make it a lot easier for him to manage the face. And obviously, since he was moving in so much to the ball before, uh, his spacing got a little bit tight into impact again, making it harder to be repeatable. Um, so those, those are the pieces. Obviously, there was a couple pieces in there that were great that we left. Um, but he did a great job and it was fun to see the transformation in the half day, half day game changer.